Dr. Altaf and uh, FC College. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, actually, this is a very dry uh, topic, visualizing climate change. And it is very difficult and very challenging as well. Bohut mushkil hai climate change ki stories ko visually uh, logon ka readers or viewers ke liye present karna. Aapne recently Pakistan mein jo floods aaye hain, aaye the aur abhi bhi hai pani hai. Miss Faranaz Zaidi Sahiba ne badi details us pe baat ki aur unka jo contribution hai, the third poll ka, wo kisi se dakka chupa nahi hai. They are doing amazing journalism, climate journalism in Pakistan. Ek kisam sa trend setter hai wo. तो पाकिस्तान में आपने देखा कि लोग जो फ्लड को कवर कर रहे थे या तो टॉक शो वाले कवर कर रहे थे या रिपोर्टर्स कवर कर रहे थे और वो सिर्फ पानी को कवर कर रहे थे कि पानी अपर रिपेरियन से शुरू होकर लोअर रिपेरियन सिंध तक डेल्टा तक आ गया और समंदर में चला गया उसके बाद हमने देखा कि हामिद मीर भी जा रहा है बाकी टी वी भी जा रहे हैं और वो उसको कवर कर रहे हैं लेकिन वो टॉक शो और रिपोर्ट जस्ट लाइक एक रूटीन रिपोर्ट्स जो है उन्होंने कवर की और बाद में हम देख रहे हैं बहुत कम पाकिस्तान में मीडिया हाउसेस ऐसे हैं जो कि फॉलो अप स्टोरीज जो है वो सैलाब पे कर रहे हैं लाइक यहाँ पे वेक्टर डिजीज़ आ गई हैं स्किन डिजीज़ है हेल्थ की इशूज़ है बहुत ज़्यादा एग्रीकल्चर भी बहुत ज़्यादा अफेक्ट हुआ है लाइक uh, डिज़ास्टर like, बहुत ज़्यादा है लेकिन इनडेप या इन्वेस्टिगेटिव काम उस पर बहुत कम हुआ है और फिर विजुअली जो है वो तो बिल्कुल सिरे से मैं कहूँगा कि वन परसेंट भी नहीं हुआ क्योंकि विजुअली आपको सिंध के रूरल एरिया में जाना होगा या खैबर पख्तनख्वा के अपर एरिया में जाना होगा या पंजाब के जनूबी पंजाब में जाना होगा जो कि हमारे टीवी अखबार और मीडिया ओनर्स उसमें इंटरेस्टेड नहीं है क्योंकि उसमें आपका ट्रैवल इन्वाल्व होता है आपका रिपोर्टर जाएगा आपका कैमरा जाएगा तो यू नीड बजट तो बजट के बहुत ज़्यादा कंस्टेंट हैं पाकिस्तान के इस क्लाइमेट uh, चेंज को कवर करने के लिए और स्पेशली विजुअली कवर करने के लिए बहुत ज़्यादा चैलेंजेस हैं तो स्पेशली uh, आपने देखा होगा कि जब भी क्लाइमेट की uh, खबरें हम देखते हैं या पढ़ते हैं या सुनते हैं तो मोस्टली ये जब काप कॉन्फ्रेंसेस होती हैं रिसेंटली अभी ख़त्म हुआ है शर्मुल शेख में काप ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी सेवन इजिप्ट में तो हमने देखा कि डान भी कर रहा है द न्यूज़ भी कर रहा है हमारा जो uh, फॉरेन मिनिस्टर है या प्राइम मिनिस्टर है या क्लाइमेट चेंज की मिनिस्टर है शरीर रहमान वो भी है और हमारी मीडिया में उसकी काफ़ी कवरेज हो रही है दो हफ्ते तक लेकिन जैसे ही कॉन्फ्रेंस ख़त्म होता है तो किसी को पता ही नहीं है कि क्या हुआ क्या नहीं हुआ तो कॉन्फ्रेंस कवर करना ये बहुत ज़्यादा ड्राई कॉन्फ्रेंस होती है काप वगैरह को अभी एक सैटरडे को ख़त्म हुआ है काप फिफ्टीन मोन्ट्रियाल कैनेडा में तो इसको विजुअली कवर करना या उसको तस्वीरों के साथ करना क्योंकि आपने देखा होगा कि काप में हमेशा बाबा बाबे होते हैं या बहुत ज़्यादा एजड लोग होते हैं डिप्लोमेट्स होते हैं हेड ऑफ स्टेट होते हैं और वो हफ्तों हफ्तों तक दो हफ्ते वो निगोसिएशंस कर रहे होते हैं तो ये बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग भी है कि आप इसको कैसे विजुअलाइज़ करें कि लाइक सिक्सटी या सेवेंटी ईयर्स ओल्ड आप एक प्राइम मिनिस्टर है वो तकरीर कर रहा है तो आप उसको लोगों को विजुअली कैसे करेंगे तो ये बहुत डिफ़िकल्ट है स्पेशली उन सहाफ़ियों के लिए जो कि क्लाइमेट को कवर करते हैं तो मैं आज इस पर बात करूँगा इस पर हम दो हिस्सों में बात करेंगे पहले हिस्से में हम ये बात करेंगे कि जो नॉर्मल रूटीन की टी रिपोर्टिंग होती है या अखबार की रिपोर्टिंग होती है टी में हम क्या करते हैं रिपोर्टर्स वो एक फार्मूला है जिस तरह है ए प्लस बी होल स्क्वेयर इसी तरह टी में भी एक फार्मूला है फोर ए ट्वेल्व बड़ा बेसिक फार्मूला है फुटेज का जब कैमरामैन uh, के साथ और रिपोर्टर फील्ड में होते हैं तो वो फोर बेसिक शॉट्स लेते हैं लॉन्ग वाइड क्लोज एक्सट्रीम क्लोज एट डिफरेंट लोकेशन से लेते हैं विद मैक्सिमम ड्यूरेशन ऑफ ट्वेल्व सेकंड तो अगर आपके पास है तो इट्स मीन आपका पाकिस्तानी परस्पेक्टिव से आपका पैकेज पूरा है आपकी रिपोर्ट जो है विल एंड गुड है फुटेज वाइज वो इंटरेस्टिंग है लोग उससे बोर नहीं होंगे लेकिन जो नेक्स्ट लेवल है फिर इन्वेस्टिगेशन है लाइक like हम क्लाइमेट चेंज की स्टोरीज को जब इन्वेस्टिगेट करते हैं तो वी नीड लेटेस्ट टूल्स एंड डेटा और इसके लिए बहुत ज़्यादा अमेजिंग टेक्नोलॉजी जिस तरह टेक्नोलॉजी ने दुनिया भर में तरक्की की है तो इसी तरह जर्नलिज़म में भी टेक्नोलॉजी का इस्तेमाल बहुत ज़्यादा है और जो इन्वेस्टिगेटिव इन्वामेंटल जर्नलिस्ट हैं वो इसी तरह इन टूल्स को इस्तेमाल करते हैं और वो अमरीका में बैठ के या पाकिस्तान में बैठ के आप अमरीका की स्टोरी कर सकते हैं 
وسط ایشیا کی سٹوری کر سکتے ہیں یورپ کی سٹوری کر سکتے ہیں بائی یوزنگ دیئر ٹولز اور اس پہ ہم مزید آج بات کریں گے اور کوشش کریں گے کہ اگر آپ کے پاس ٹائم ہو تو ہم کچھ وہ ٹولز آپ اپنے موبائل سے کریں کہ کیسے ہم آپ لاہور میں بیٹھ کے خیبر پختونخواہ میں چترال کی سٹوری گلاب پہ کر سکتے ہیں اینڈ فار دیٹ یو کین کنیکٹ یور وائی فائز اف یو نیڈ انٹرنیٹ یا وائی فائی ڈیٹیلز ول بی آن دا اسکرین so you can connect your wifi so when uh, mr daud ask you to do the activity you okay, can do thank it. you so yes. much yes thank you so much to sabse pehle main apne area ki baat karunga current i am based in pada chinar pada chinar jo hai wo it's very close to kabul almost 100 km away from kabul and uh, 250 km away from uh, peshawar so pada chinar is a very interesting uh, جیو پولیٹیکل سچویشن اور وہاں پہ جو سب سے امپورٹنٹ تھنگ دیر از دا ہند کش ماؤنٹین رینج اینڈ ایز پر ایز دا دا سائنٹیفک اینڈ دا کلائمیٹ ایکسپرٹ سیز دیٹ دا ہند کش ماؤنٹین ریجن از موسٹلی ولنیبل اینڈ موسٹلی افیکٹیڈ بائی دا کلائمیٹ چینج اور اس میں بہت زیادہ ایشوز ہیں لائک کرنٹلی آئی ایم ورکنگ ان اے ریڈیو اینڈ موسٹلی اور فوکس از انوائرمنٹ اینڈ کلائمیٹ چینج سو the the local journalist uh, in that district district tribal district kurum they have labeled us as a weather channel because our main focus is uh, climate and environment news so the the osr the outstation reporter mostly focuses the the dc news the commissioner news the the mna news the political stuff we have more focus on the climate and environment related stories so so they have label us like this so in especially when we talk about visuals in 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 a visual medium so we always uh, go for videos and our editors and our director news always told us that first go for video and if you don't have video go for the still photo and if you don't have still photo go for the graphics and if you don't have the graphics go for the maps so this is the very simple and easy formula in the in the tv journalism we we used to uh, do in the our newsroom and uh, in our news packages so we will discuss these thing how scientifically we can cover uh, the the visual climate uh, news and climate stories like i will share some up example as well uh, in padachinar i was uh, two years ago i was covering a digital story in Padachinar. So we have uh, faces uh, really, really hard issues and we were worried how to cover these issues. We will discuss it. And uh, especially, uh, first of all, I would like to play a video and uh, I will show what kind of uh, issues we, we face while covering this digital uh, report. And actually, uh, this is a mojo. We, we shoot this video on mobile but i just want to show that what are the challenges the reporter face in the field while covering climate related story and environmental story so uh, can we play the, that video yes you need to focus on the video that i will tell you how we manage uh, actually this is a issue that we have trout uh, fishes in uh, padachinar as well like in the gb and in the northern areas pakistan we have trout fishes they survive in a very cold water so parachinar is a cold place so that's why kal butali rasi bacho pampari rasi de batrum ubar rasi de kapro wala sabano ubar rasi sada ga channel ki roshi mu bo ki aga mishe ubandi de bad asar chai mishe aga de wajina khuro aga uru uru kapro shi aga wajina de dima tele tu shi so da muta de ghat nuksan de mona ma sayat mudasir husain de از دوی جی لوکل او د مو ټیکنیشن سره پیش د وچات د مو سره او بوکی زنا مسالې روشي یا زنا واکه خورا کې د مسالې روشي تاغي نه ته بیماری لګیږي تقریبا دا کله میاشت د بیس باندې غټو کې ستاره اتاره بی ستا وی سپچوس ګرمې کې بیلک زیات مري ګنده او بوته سره دی مو ترسی هغه پیش د فار نقصان لري او پیش ماتل چې مغه واچنه کیږي دې ته سره سپو بو وی هغه کې مو پیش یا خوشو دی بروتین یا کیږي دا لکه کوم کیمیکل رسی او بوتلې رسی او څه رسی هغه باڈی باندې بیډ اثر چې هزار ټیم کې دا پونی ډیری رسی اکثر دو کې د بوتلې متل روشي د اوتي مو مشمونی او کې چای یو د جناح کې سره پلاټ روشي سغوا چې نه د مو د ګیل سکون دې د پیش والا هغه باندې شغل نه د غیمه تل کې د برانو واخي کې مو سره پلاټ رسی دا د پونو واجنه دې ته د سکین بیماریز یو تلګي کې د سترګو بیماری د سترګي وچي شي 
لقينا غابي حركتنا شي فوق قروبنا بس يا غينا بيا كمزوري فوق شو بيا پیش فام سده که نداره تا دیر زیاد خل گند اوتری بیا ما دادی که چی سوم راشه زنادی اگه تما ول چی تاسو داسو ما که ایدا که کیمیکال سی زکه چی کما مچلی دادی که دار دیگه دی پرداخته سی. So actually, I just want to show that actually this is a story about the the dying trout fishes due to the water pollution and the, we show that that how the water is getting polluted and how it's affect uh, the the fishes uh, in this hitchery and we need for this story we need uh, women voices that is very important like if you are in Parachinar in a tribal district and you want to uh, interview a, a woman and a female this is impossible we like, this is impossible we can't do that be, because to due to the culture uh, taboos and restrictions so we can't do that so how we handle that like actually the main topic is climate visualization and uh, problem and challenges and solutions so what is our solution that uh, we have a very small team and we sat together and uh, we said that we need women voices female voices in this digital report so how we need to do that so this is our female colleague actually in the shuttlecock uh, you see in the last <laughs> yes so you are very smart, actually. So, <laughs> uh, like, we told her female colleague, first we go to the, the community and we talk, our, this uh, lady, this, this is actually our engineer, uh, female engineer. So we went to the different uh, villages and she talked to the ladies. And uh, she talked to at least seven uh, females, women in, in, the, in the Parachinar. So at the end, we wrote that what the uh, what those women says so we just i i just wrote the script and told her that you need to do this and so actually she was from banu and she said that i am also not allowed to <laughs> face the camera so i told her do you have a burka so she said yes so we can do that with burka so like we have a kind of solution as well so there is another story that I did for the Scotsman, one of the oldest newspaper in, in Scotland. So this is a very, uh, you know, uh, short feature. And uh, in, in, Para, in Kurum district, it is a very mountainous village. Like there is mountains and ups and downs in the, in the area. So there is no bicycle. Even there is no bicycle in the entire uh, district. So once I was on the way to, to city and I found a kid who was pumping the the pipeline. So I just stopped as a journalist. So I said, what are you doing? So so the boy told me that the water is not coming to our home. And uh, if I pump this uh, pressure to the this pipeline, so after five minutes, the water will come to uh, uh, our our home. So I found it quite fascinating and interesting. And I want to tell this story to the, to the world that a village or in a district up uh, North Western Pakistan, they don't have bicycle in their homes, but each homes have a cycle pump in, just to pitch the water from <laughs> this. Can you show that story as well? How we visualize that that story actually? There is a multimedia. We we just the, the, these men were not agree uh, to be interviewed, and uh, they agreed to be uh, for, for the still photo. So we just uh, got their still photo. The, the next photo. Next one. Yes, this one. Actually, this is, this is, can be a normal thing in Parachinar, but this can be a very interesting thing in the other parts, like in Lahore and in Peshawar, where uh, drinking water is not a big issue. So these are the, the, just the problem and the solution that as a reporter I faced in the, in the field in the, in the last two years. So now, before starting, I will, I will go to the slides and show that how uh, visual uh, journalism and visual climate investigative journalism is and what 
I have learned these uh, techniques and these skills in the Oxford Climate Journalism Network uh, from our amazing editors and managers and different professors from the different universities. So I will share their experience and their slide that how they, 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 they taught us their visualizing climate change. As I mentioned earlier, this is very tricky, difficult, but very interesting as well. What does what does climate news look like? Already, Ms. Uh, Farah Naz already show some glimpses of the, the third floor, uh, third floor pole, uh, how the climate news look like. So it is very dry subject, but visually it's very uh, impossible, but not difficult. We have always, we have solutions. Can we go to the next slide? Oh, oh, oh sorry. Why care about climate images, like why people are the readers or the viewers care about, about the footage and the visual because it is very simple. It plays a key role in storytelling. Image or video can save time and an image can show you what you can't tell the viewers in thousand words. So that's why it's play a very key role in the storytelling. And when we do stories, so our editor and director news always tell about the visual, that how you will cover this visually. So we always have a solution. Like why visuals and images important? It affects the news. And actually it's draw viewer attention and remembering us the news. Like sometimes we forget the words. Most of the time we forget words, but we don't remember. Uh, but we still uh, are always remember the good visual, like uh, we have a very uh, famous Time magazine cover photo of uh, Afghan girl. I forgot his, her name. Sharbat Gula. Like it's almost three decades ago or four decades ago, but the, the photo is still fresh. Her eyes is still like refresh uh, in our memories of the Sharbat Gula. And Sharbat Gula is still a very good follow-up story due to that image. So image is always important. It draw viewers, it draw viewers' attention, and it always remember us to remember the new story. So we already played our uh, the, the the video, a digital video that we have uh, played it. So like how to co uh, cop like situation, like when we have cop conferences, we have a lot of news and press releases in the in the TV and the international press. But actually, the the covering the cop conferences are very dry. They are old diplomats, they are negotiations, dry negotiations. So we always go for the next option, like, okay, on the one side we have negotiation, but on the other side, always in front of the COP venues, we have something like this. So we need, we need to show the world that, okay, on the one side, we have like, uh, Negoci negotiation going on, but on the other si side, the journalists showing the faces of the climate change, like masses are the faces of the climate change, and they are the mostly affected people. So there are climate activists, there are some organization who are arranging such, such kind of protest to draw the world media attention. So these are the basic things. Yes. But there are some protests inside the, uh, the venue as well. I have seen this in a COP26 in Glasgow. Dozens of uh, protests happening inside the COP. But they were very smart people. They have arranged uh, this. Uh, although uh, in COP, protest is not allowed, but people are managing that. There are some organizations who are supporting that uh, protest. So the, in the first half, I spoke about the basic visualization. It is very easy and normal in Pakistan we follow what I have said. Like we have smartphone and camera and we do this. But like being an uh, investigative climate change or environmental reporter, you need to do something very uh, interesting to draw the viewer and the reader attention. Like the Global Investigative Journalism Network, they have created some outstanding tools uh, and they are very helpful for the journalists if they follow. And, and I, I will really recommend, if you are interested in a climate change, 
and environmental stories, you need to follow these tools. These, are, these tools are very interesting and it really help you in your storytelling. So number one is a digital observatory for the protected areas, also called DUPA. You can search it and this is, and you can search Pakistan as well. So this is very user friendly. Uh, it tells you about the internationally protected areas. Like we have protected areas in Pakistan, uh, in many parts, uh, in many provinces. And uh, it, it tells you the detail about the wetlands, birds, and also it gives you detail about the UNESCO reservoirs like how many reservoirs we have. So this is a very easy tool and actually it's a very good for mapping and, and visualizing your story. So it's such kind of tools add colors to your story if you, if you do that and it really help uh, uh, the readers and the viewers as well. So those who are interested in covering environmental stories are especially covering the billion tree tsunami and protected, protected areas of Pakistan. So they need to use this tool as well. This is quite interesting. The other one is quite similar to that one, that is protected uh, plants. Uh, actually, this is a project of UN Environment Program, and actually it pr provides uh, about the uh, information about the protected areas, assessment, management, information, and community stakeholders. So it tells you about these things, and it easy, uh, it's very easy, and download option is available for the journalist. Sometimes uh, visualizing data is very difficult, and visualizing things is very difficult, but these tools, they have very simplified these things, and you can, and, and, and any, any reporter and journalist can easily download these uh, stuff. And if you go to, uh, their uh, website, so you can search Pakistan, you can search your province, you will get a lot of data about your country, your good visualization about your region as well. So the next one is Environmental Justice Atlas. This is quite amazing and this is my favorite as well. Like in Pakistan, uh, we can monitor where is climate justice is going on, what are the cases, so we can, in, in, in a in our palm, we can do it very easily from our mobile and from our laptop. So this is also a very good tool, global atlas uh, of environmental justice. Uh, if you have time, you just uh, Google that uh, link and you will get some amazing result about Pakistan. And it will show you that where uh, you can find environmental justice stories and environmental justice cases in Pakistan. Like last night I was searching Dia Mir Basha Dam. It's under construction dam and it's very, you know, uh, long lasting or a very, you know, good project for Pakistan, but it's also facing some criticism internationally in Pakistan as well. So there are local, they have given some links about the local protest, how it affects the local environment, how it affects the local biodiversity, how it will affect the agriculture, and how it is polluting our environment. So, and which country, uh, which country is sponsoring this project, and which company is doing the construction work. So you will get a lot of information about uh, climate uh, justice in Pakistan. So actually I was searching that there are currently in this tool, in this website, in this remote sensing, they have 16, identified 16 environmental justice cases in Pakistan, almost each in every provinces. Even they have uh, stories in, in Sindh, uh, even they have uh, cases in, in uh, Karachi as well, uh, in, in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa as well. So it's a community, uh, it shows the community impacts and environment conflict. So we have environment com uh, conflict in Pakistan. So. Being a reporter, you need to go deep deeper and investigate these things and do some extra reporting while such kind of tools will help you how to investigate your story. And it also gives you past legal issues, protest, incidents, links, documents, research, and websites. So this is quite an amazing uh, tool that the investigative environmental journalists are using these tools around the world. And they have very good data and very good stuff in this link. Global Forest Watch, like we have a very uh, flagship project in Pakistan that we call 10 billion 
tree tsunami that was started in 2015 in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. That was billion tree tsunami. Later on, when the PTI came into power in the in the federal, they named it uh, 10 billion tree tsunami. So you can monitor your forest, like Pakistan have forest, but we have uh, like deforestation issues in Pakistan. So you can monitor the forest in your province, in your district, and in the entire Pakistan, even in the region, you can uh, uh, monitor the forest-related data and data visualization in this website. So this is quite uh, also my favorite and very amazing tool to use while covering uh, billion tree tsunami related story or reverse deforestation story. It is a very good tool for that. It offers the latest data about the forest. And, and they have a very good website if you are interested in the forest related story. So you can subscribe their uh, uh, newsletter as well. They have a good newsletter. They, they use technology tools and empower people to protect their forest. So this is quite an amazing uh, tool as well. And the next one, this is very good, uh, the Sky Truth flaring map. This is quite good. Like everybody is talking about the emission, like how to monitor emission in the world, how to monitor methane and carbon emission in the world. So this is very tricky. And this website and this remote sensing uh, website has really helped the journalists that where is the carbon and methane emission is is going to up and if anyone is doing any story about the emission so they can visualize their story they have amazing visualization which can attract viewers readers uh, and listeners as well if they if the reporter tell a story in a very good manner it produces real time maps about the gas flaring around the globe not only in pakistan but around the globe it depend on the the journalist uh, that which area or which country is focusing on and it generates flaring volume maps that reflects high methane and uh, concentration. Like methane and it's all about the gases emission in, around the world. And some amazing scientists, they are behind this project and they are really helping uh, the journalist community to, to monitor emissions and to do reporting and further investigation about such kind of stuff uh, in that. I think I have 20 minutes. Uh, there is a very, <laughs> this is a very broad topic. So it's very difficult for me to concise this to 20 minutes. So I try my best to show what I have learned in the expert, uh, in the expert climate journalism network. So I will really recommend to use these tools while if anyone in, in interesting, uh, interested in such kind of stories like environmental and climate change related stories. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Daud. Thank you. So uh, any comments? Yes, there is a one. Sir, uh, uh, please wait. Uh, the Fatma, bira, mic, please. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm really appreciative of your work, Daud Khan. And uh, but I have a very you no know, quick question about like uh, as you have told that the sky truth flaring map is being managed by uh, the look uh, scientists. Are they from Pakistan or? Uh, they are from abroad. No one is from Pakistan. I have uh, shown these websites. No one is from Pakistan. But actually, in the in the global atlas, okay. you can contribute any climate justice uh, case uh, in Pakistan. You need to sign up with uh, this website, and you need they have their own procedure. So no one is uh, like monitoring or working, as per as my knowledge, uh, don't have. Uh, and uh, the 16 cases you have mentioned that of environmental justice that we can find on that website. Have they been selected by the you know international uh, yes. personnel, or have they been selected by our own? Actually, the, the the 16 cases reported by the Global Atlas. Okay. Uh, there is quite popular cases in Pakistan, and mostly the mainstream media of Pakistan have already reported that, like the Third Pole, the Dawn, and the news. They have already reported on these issues. Like they are regularly covering the protest on on the Amir Basha Dam and some other dams. So they are monitoring like that. But other than that, they are remote and satellite monitoring system. So they use satellite as well, where is the conflict, and they are showing uh, actually uh, what was the area before the, the, the dam and what happened after the construction of the dam. So they have satellite images from okay. there. So like in Pakistan, we don't have the technology. Yeah, yeah. So we need to rely That's on them because they are very advanced in technology. Thank you. 
Yeah. And one last question. Uh, uh, I'm just interested to know that, like, uh, have you made or developed uh, any inventory of, you know, uh, of, uh, you know, contribution of greenhouse gases by different sectors, some sort of sectoral inventory of, uh, you know, greenhouse gas emissions in Pakistan? Because usually we lack data in this regard, like some reliable source which, like, 43% uh, is being, you know, emitted by transport sector or industry sector or agriculture. We don't have some authentic data on that, even not from some government department. So have you developed some resource in this regard? No. Personally, I didn't, but okay. they have. Like, okay. uh, as far as the federal government data is concerned, that Pakistan is contributing contributing points, point eight percent no, no, emission That is global. total. Yeah, but to locally, how, which particular sector is contributing to what extent of uh, greenhouse gases? We lack data when we, you know, write papers on that. We are, you know, quite lacking in this regard. Like, we don't have any inventory. Like in Western world, when you go over there, every country have their own sectoral assessment of uh, their, you know, local sources of uh, greenhouse gases. But we don't have in Pakistan. So yes. maybe... Even you can imagine that uh, from the uh, recent monsoon flood, we still are working on the assessment of the damage in Pakistan. Our government is still working on that. Right. And we are still relying on the data of the World Bank that how many loss and damage happened in this recent floods. So in, unfortunately in Pakistan, we don't have such kind of data, but these kind of tools, they are providing data about the Pakistan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, sir, please, yes. We have last Thank comment. Uh, I am Kamran from uh, University of Central Punjab. Thank you, Daud, for such informative uh, session. Uh, you have made a short uh, reports on uh, climate like the one on fish and have you worked on the mining because they um, that uh, mm, that is hitting a lot to the climate and it, especially in your area yes. they are using dynamite and all those have you work on that as well or not actually uh, we are facing some uh, challenges in this issue. Like uh, two years ago, I was to try. I was trying to report a story on sand mining. So it was a whole map yeah, in the background, like how you can build defense in Behria town without sand, and how you can go and how you can publish a story in the news and some other than Don. Like Don is going there uh, for that. So it's very difficult for the Pakistani media. Uh, to report on that issue like every mine in Pakistan if we being a journalist we go into deep and to dig out that mine in the background we, we found in a very landlord influential politician or minister behind that mine so it is very difficult but yes there are some other journalists who are, who have done some good investigative stories on the mining in Khyber so why not to use social media and social media platforms for such issues rather than going to direct to the uh, mainstream media now it's a time for social media. Why don't you use that? Yes, we can use that. And uh, actually, if we uh, report such kind of story, so we need impact. So once the, the the such kind of story report in the biggest in the biggest publication like the Times, the Washington Post, and some other international publication like the BBC, the Guardian, the Telegraph, so they have their huge impact. So that's why social media has a very indigenous impact. While Publishing such kind of investigative stuff has a very uh, global impact. So that's why uh, mostly the journalists go uh, and find some international publications.